pressure will tend to come down over the course of the night. Okay, it will tend to come down. Yours is already coming. Um, it doesn't always come down that way. In fact, frankly, given your age and your, your situation, I'm a little surprised because often what happens is to go up first as the body begins to break down plaque. You've got all this loose garbage floating around in your bloodstream. The viscosity of your blood goes up. What happens to pressure? Blood is thicker. What happens to pressure goes up? So often what happens is pressure will go up for somebody. It doesn't happen for everybody. It's usually people over about 60 that already have blood pressure issues. Pressure will usually go up for the first four or five days, and then it'll start to come back down. Usually by the end of a week, it's lower than where it started. But yours has started to come down right away. We might still see it go up at some point. Okay? But overall, over the course of, of your six-week fasts, your blood pressure is going to trend down for the most part. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's, it's great for most people. It is an issue if your pressure was already low, because it's going to come down anyway. It's going to come down more if it started out high. But it's going to come down either way. And how you feel and function at a particular blood pressure number depends more on what your body's accustomed to. So your blood pressure is already 38 points lower than it's been recently. You're going to want to start being really careful right now. Okay, And all of you should practice now before you need to. Because at some point, your blood pressure is going to drop enough that when you get up, you feel dizzy. What's going on? Well, if it's dropped, there's a threshold where all of a sudden it becomes hard for your body to get enough blood, oxygen, and nutrients to your brain. You ever stand up and feel dizzy? All the time. You don't get enough blood to your brain. Okay. So right now, um, you're already at the point where because your blood pressure is 38 points lower than it was a short time ago, it could happen to you now, even though your blood pressure is still high. It's low, relatively speaking, for your body, from where it's, what's used to. Okay. So starting now, I want each of you to please be careful. Please. Um, fortunately, wood gives a little bit, but the tile floors, probably harder than your face. Okay, don't test this hypothesis. Um, every year, one or two people stand up too fast and fall down and sometimes hurt themselves. So please, please be careful. This is the single most likely danger for people fasting because they don't take their time. Take your time. If you, and all of you are probably used to jumping up when it's time to pee. Like if you're laying in bed, you need to pee, you jump out of bed. Don't do that anymore. What you need to do now is sit up first. Okay, make sure that your pressure is equalized. That you feel stable sitting up after you've been laying down. Only when you feel comfortable, and give it at least a minute. Then stand up and be ready to catch yourself. If you stand up and you start to feel dizzy, sit back down and drop your head down between your legs. Okay, that gets the blood to your head faster, and only when you feel okay, bring your head back up, get normalized sitting up again, and then try standing up again. Take your time. Be ready to catch yourself. You know, if you need to, use the walls, the furniture to get from point A to point B. I don't want you to fall down. Please, please be careful. Okay. Now, how can you affect this? It's going to drop, but how can you affect this in a way that makes it as... Le less dangerous than it would be otherwise. Less of an issue. Anybody? Make sure you're drinking enough water. If you don't drink enough water, as we just finished explaining the last time, if we don't drink enough water, it's going to drop even more. And you're more likely to have this same experience. So it is important that you get enough water. And for most people, three to four liters a day will do it. Not for everybody. Some people need more than that. There is no magic number. That's what most people seem to need, but it really depends on what your body needs. Now, let's say that for the next week, you're drinking three liters a day, and every, the numbers are fine, you feel fine, you're not getting dizzy, everything's working perfectly well. And then all of a sudden, one day, you had the same amount of water, but you feel dizzier, and your numbers aren't as good. Right? And, you know, invariably people say, but I drank just as much as I did before. It's not about what we put in here. When we're talking about food and, and nutrition, it's not about what we put in here. When we're talking about water, 
It's not about what we put in here. It's about what actually gets into the body. So remember, as I've been telling you guys, if you sip the water, your body has a better chance to use it. I like to say, if you sip it, you own it. If you gulp it, you're renting it. Okay? It's going to pass right on through. You'll have to pee more. You'll have to get up to pee more often, and um, you're not going to get the benefit of it as much. So, so make sure you sip your water. Make sure you're getting it enough. And understand, too, that if your body is carrying any old material, now there is some chance of that, like old material, you know, old waste in the colon, there's some chance of that. Of the 2,000 plus fasters I've supervised through this process so far, right around 100% have eliminated old material. Okay, Virtually everybody is carrying some old stuff. So chances are good you're going to have some too. And what are you saying? They've passed, uh, they've passed some before they were carrying some? Or what? Well, if it comes out, it means it was in there. Yeah. So I'm, I'm connecting the dots and seeing if we, say, if we see it, then you must have been carrying it before you got here. Okay? Because you're not creating yeah. it now. You're not eating yeah. anything now. Um, you will be able to tell when you start to eliminate, when you start eating again, which is a while down the road, and you start to eliminate only what you've just eaten, the new material. You have a bowel movement. Let's say you have spent a day eating only watermelon. When you eliminate that, and it's only that coming out, you will know it was only watermelon. You'll be able to tell. Mm -hmm. When you have bowel movements that are hard and dry and very dark and stinky, you will know it was not the watermelon or papaya you just ate yesterday. Okay? This will be clear evidence. There's no way that stuff comes out looking like and smelling like that and feeling like that. So this old stuff, think of it this way. You go on vacation for a while. You come home and your potted plants, the soil is hard and dry, right? No one's been in there for a week or two. You go to water the plant, what happens to the water? Doesn't it doesn't absorb. It just runs off. And you have to sort of get it wet a little bit, and then it starts to really absorb water. The same is true of the old soil in your body. Okay, and so you may need to allow that your body to break that old stuff down, and then it's going to start absorbing water eventually. So what worked for you for the last seven days in a row may not work for you tomorrow, if all of a sudden your body's in a position where it's ready to start absorbing more water. And you'll know. You'll, you'll be able to tell at some point. This this will come up in conversation, I guarantee you. It's going to come up with you guys. And some of you are going to start to feel bloated. Why would that happen? Well, let's say you had X quantity of old material sitting there, whatever X is. Let, let's say that it's enough to support, to soak up a half gallon of water. A half gallon of water means now there's a lot more volume. And what else? Weight. Four pounds in half a gallon. If you have an extra four pounds sitting right here, you're going to feel that. Okay, that happens. So you, you will, you'll start to feel what's going on. And often what happens is, You'll start to feel this, and you'll feel bloated and uncomfortable, and then you'll have a bowel movement, and you'll feel better. And you'll go, it'll, be, it'll be a cyclical thing as old material gets rehydrated. Some of you will eliminate while you're fasting. Some of you won't. Typically, most people will eliminate the first day or two. I'll ask you every day, but typically the first day or two, people will eliminate their last couple meals. And, and it depends on how long it takes to get from here to the other end. In a healthy, well-functioning system, it's 8 to 12 hours. But that's not typical. Anybody guess what is typical? 72 hours. <laughs> yeah. Say again? 72 hours. 72 would be an improvement for most people. The average is 96 hours. 8 to 12 times longer than it should take. This is one of the reasons we have so many problems. And, and by the way, this cannot happen, or at least can't happen consistently on an ongoing basis if you're eating properly. This happens because people are eating dried food with no fiber. Because animal products and processed foods contain almost no water and almost no fiber. That's a problem. We're designed to be consuming stuff that's full of water and full of fiber so the body can move it along. So when we're eating dried and fiberless, primarily fiberless foods, the system gets backed up. and so. If your spotty has been taking three or four days to get from here to here, I mean, you might have had two or three bowel movements a day, every day of your life, until now. 
you had your you ate your last meal, you haven't eliminated anything. What's going on? Well, it could have been you were eliminating two or three times a day, but not from the day before, but from three or four days ago. Okay. And, and some people say, no, I'm not constipated because I have two or three bowel movements a day. I would say if you're not eliminating eight, eight to 12 hours after you eat, there's some constipation, what I would call constipation. Your system is backed up. It's not working as efficiently as possible. And that means that, A, your diet's probably not been optimal. B, you're probably dehydrated. And C, there's probably some toxins coming into your system as a result of this. And it's a, it's a big burden on the body. So... As that begins to shift, and it will, as it shifts almost, if not completely entirely, almost entirely as a result of this process, lots of things are going to shift for you. We talked about uh, hydration yesterday with you two guys. We haven't done yours yet. We'll do it shortly. Uh, but most people are not going to see significant gains in hydration while fasting. Why not? The body is using the water for eliminated That's purposes. right. Remember... Water is the universal transport medium, right? So however your body needs to cleanse itself, it's going to need water to do that. And not so much water is going to be able to get into your cells for better hydration until your system is clean, which is why I rarely see anybody well hydrated if they haven't got their body clean already. It almost never happens. It's very rare. And one of the few times it does happen is when people are, are pretty big and are losing a lot of weight quickly. Because as the body breaks down fat, it's releasing water into the wa into the body. So those people will be better hydrated than the average person, but only temporarily. For most of those people, they probably weren't so well hydrated before they started losing weight. And if they stopped losing weight for whatever reason, they would cease to be very well hydrated pretty quickly. Okay. What we need to do is, is recreate a whole systemic balance, change the ecology of the entire body so we've got balance on an ongoing basis. And when we do that, it's easy to maintain. But we need to get there first. So by getting your system as clean as possible, in the two to three months following your fast, if you have a way to measure it, you will see, assuming you follow the program I give you, you will see your level of hydration go way up. And we'll talk more over the, the course of these next weeks about how to do that, exactly what that program looks like and what you're going to need to do. But if you're willing to follow it, you will see a significant shift. And when you do, everything begins to change. Because everything really hinges on hydration. And I know that you use a, what, a device yep. to measure, but is there another way to measure hydration? There, there, there's no other way that I'm aware of that's you available to you. Feel better. Yeah, right. Um, I mean, one of the things that you can do is... You can check to see how quickly your skin returns mm -hmm. when you pinch it, but, yeah. th but that's not um, a scientific test. Right. Right. That's not going to tell you very much. Uh, and in fact, there's going to be lag time because the skin that you're currently wearing reflects everything that's happened up till now. Let's say that you were able overnight to get your, your body clean and start rehydrating. You'd still have the same skin on that you did yesterday. It, you know, it takes some time for your skin to catch up. So loss of elasticity does happen almost exclusively because of lack of hydration, the chronic dehydration. But even when you change the hydration, your skin will take a little bit of time. You're going to see some shift there, but that, that wouldn't be a scientific way. 